Hello everyone, this is Excalibur of A Noob's Guide to Magic the Gathering. And I was asked, um, well actually it was a suggestion made by my friend Dave that uh, when I do pack cracking that I talk about what cards I would use for drafts and stuff like that. Well, I'm not a big drafter. Um, I don't like the concept of um, opening up packs and then passing the cards around and possibly getting the rares that you like out of the three packs that you get. I understand the draw to draft. Um, it's a pretty fun format and I've played them before but um, I find sealed and uh, pre-built um, tournaments to be a, um, a much better outlet. But since I don't have a packs to uh, go through right now, I thought I'd take you through the Booster Draft Simulator on uh, Wizards' website. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to open up three packs, and it's going to simulate an eight-player um, draft. And I'll try and explain why I choose the cards that I do as we go through the draft. Now, uh, this is the second attempt at this recording. The first time I got a Chandra right out of the right out of the gate, but I don't think we'll get it again for a while. Um, that turned out to be a pretty interesting burn in um, elemental deck with young pyromancers and molten... Uh, oh, I forgot the name of that sorcery. Uh, molten Rebirth. There we go. So uh, what we're going to do here is... Uh, you can see the URL here. You can, of course, go and uh, visit the simulator yourself if you so choose and uh, go through drafts to get some practice. But I'm going to go ahead and start drafting now, and we will see what we come up with. Look at that. I am shocked. We get a Chandra right off the bat. I'm taking her. Again, we're going to go for a burn deck. Now, I'm wondering, this looks very similar to what I just did. It looks like I would have to restart the simulator to get um, different cards. But we're going to go ahead and make the picks now that... I would have picked before. Now we got Chandra, and uh, she's definitely a burner. And you can cast spells from the top of your library, and you can exile the top 10 cards and uh, choose an instant or sorcery and copy it three times. So I'm going to take Chandra's Outrage, because if we happen to do that minus 7 and pop that, that's going to be 12 total damage. Um, spread around to one or more creatures, and then six damage to the controller of uh, those creatures. So there we go. We'll grab that. Now, here we're going to look for some ramp. Um, I see the Lava Axe up there and doing 15 points of damage, possibly. Would be really awesome. But the thing is, we're going to need some ramp to get those big spells out. And we have the option of the Mono Whiffed Sliver or of the Elvish Mystic. Now this Deadly Recluse, that's a pretty good pretty good deterrent. Um, when you're doing a draft, you want to keep some principles in mind. These principles are an acronym that uh, spells out BREAD. Um, B, your bomb. The, uh, the card that you think is going to win you the game, or very close to winning the game. That's going to play an important part in how you build your deck. Um, R, removal. Uh, Chandra just happens to be both B and R at the same time, and Chandra's Outrage is an R as well. So there's uh, the bomb and the removal. Removal can also be take place in things like uh, claustrophobia or uh, pacifism, where you keep the opponent's creatures tapped down or unable to block or do anything. Arrest is also another one that uh, is in Theros, and I think it was back in Mirrodin Besieged. I can't remember. Maybe Scars of Mirrodin. In any case, uh, um, Arrest also stops activated abilities from being used. Arrest is very good. Um, so that's removal. Um, e and the bread equation is evasion. We're talking things like haste, death touch, reach, uh, flying, unblockability, hexproof. 
those kind of things, if you're doing a big creature deck, are going to be very, very important to you. Um, a is aggro. How big of a creature? How many creatures? How fast are your creatures? Um, how much damage can you pump into your opponent as quickly as possible? That's aggro. And D is dredge. Dredge is all the cards that are used as filler for your deck. Um, so, for instance... If you had a Shadowborn Apostle, like we did in the first first hand there, the Shadowborn Apostle would be considered dredge because it's going to be incredibly unlikely that you'll come up with um, 16 Shadowborn Apostles. Because if somebody has taken one, they're going to gun for getting every single one that's in the draft. Uh, we'll be going through a total of 24 packs, so there's a possibility of getting... Um, six Shadowborn Apostles, but it's a long, long, long shot. So what I'm looking at here is I want um, Burn, I want Ramp, and I want creatures that deter an opponent's creatures from attacking. I also want creatures that are hard to hit or take out. Um, for instance, the Academy Raider down here, he has Intimidate. He's not going to be blocked. So a 1-1 one, one for 3 with Intimidate is pretty decent. But every time you um, damage a player, you can get rid of some of the chaff in your hand to draw another card. It could get you land. It could get you the burn spell that you're looking for. Or it could get you a creature. Um, that's an option. So he's, he's a pretty good contender. He's kind of expensive for, for a 1-1, one, one, even with his abilities. I'd say um, if you want to go for fast, you want to go for like one and two drops. You don't want to go for the three drop unless you're gunning for draw decks. Um, a quarter shield is always good because, one, it gives you a blocker in addition to an attacker, and it also beefs up the creature's toughness. Um, its equip cost is three, so instead of looking at that zero up in the upper right corner, Look at the three. That's the uh, casting cost that you'll be looking at. So a quarter shield technically costs three mana to get any use out of. Keep that in mind. Um, when it comes to ramp, like the Elvish Mystic or the Mono Weft Sliver, you've got to keep in mind that how fast are these ramp cards going to pay for themselves? The Mono Weft Sliver is going to come down on turn two. There's no doubt about it. Um, and then on turn three, he pays for half of his cost, and on turn four, he'll pay for his full cost. However, if you've got a couple of Mana Weft Slivers coming out, or a couple of Slivers in total, like a Striking Sliver or whatever, they all become Mana um, generating creatures, and that could be a big advantage. It's one of the reasons why Slivers are very, very good, especially if uh, and constructed. Um, the Elvish Mystic you can come down in turn one. Uh, you can tap on turn two for three mana, and that's going to get you your Academy of Raider. Um, it's going to be pretty good. So you drop a Forest and an Elvish Mystic turn one, a Mountain on turn two, you've got your Academy Raider on turn three, and chances are your opponent doesn't have enough creatures that are red or artifact to block. Now, there aren't very many artifact creatures here, unless you uh, count Hive Stirrings or uh, Sliver... Um, uh, sliver constructs. Uh, I don't remember any other real uh, um, artifact creatures in the game, so this is something that we'll have to have to play with. I'm going to be going for a tokenish kind of deck, but not through Hive Stirrings, and I'm going to want to get some blocking going on. Uh, a creature, a one-two creature with Death Touch and Reach, is going to stop any flyer except for a Seraph of the Sword, because damage is going to be uh, negated there. Um, fog is going to keep it um, safe as well. So we're going to go ahead and grab that Deadly Recluse. Now here we are. We have some really good um, removal here with Pacifism. But I see something better. We're going for Burn decks. So it's going to be a lot of instant and sorcery cards. So Young Pyromancer is going to pump out 1-1 one, one Elementals every single time we cast an instant or a sorcery spell. Um, and if we get a Molten Rebirth, then 
we pump out three one one elementals um with the young pyromancer i'm going to grab him um yes we see things like the dragon hatchling with flying and pumping um merfolk spy which lets you see a card at random whoopee 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 um he's chaff um alters reap we don't have a lot of creatures to sacrifice and we're not really doing um a draw deck so that's it's not something we need we are going to go naya we're going to go red green and white but uh pacifism i think is going to pale in comparison to young pyromancer if somebody puts pacifism on our pyromancer we're still going to get elementals out so i'm not too afraid of this guy uh staff of the wild mages we're not going to worry too much about getting life off of forests and green spells it's an idea but i think we want um pyromancer over this glade cover scout has hexproof yeah, it's okay she's a one drop um and she can't be targeted so she, that's some really good evasion but she's only one one and blocking a one one is still blocking a one one now ranger's guile in conjunction with a glade cover scout is pretty decent you get a two two for two that's hexproof uh but we get redundant on the hexproof we'll probably get some later on um i may change my mind based on what we go through this time but we'll, we'll skip that uh we're not going to go black festering nude is a good way to uh um get rid of one one creatures or two two creatures if you block excuse me or if uh the festering nude is blocked suntail hawk flying one one for one not too bad not too bad at all why it has it looks like three legs i don't know i've never noticed that before i'll have to take a look at the larger picture but uh we, we're better off with the young pyromancer for two in corpse hauler we're not going black and we're not going to go for any big critters but that puts creatures back into our hands so if we're discarding and getting land out and then later on sacrificing the corpse hauler for a big creature it's not really going to be a big deal unless we have a lot of ramp going on. I'm going to take that young pyromancer because I like his ability with our with our concept. Now we need ramp. Uh, I keep saying that ramp. What's ramp? Ramp is the ability to create mana faster than what your lands um, your land drops do. So on turn one, you have one mana that you can use. If you have an elvish mystic, that turns into two. On turn two with another land drop that's a total of three so you have three mana instead of two by turn three which means that uh you've got yourself more than what you'd normally get without special cards that give you mana had i taken the elvish mystic instead of the deadly recluse um with this dark steel inga here we could potentially by turn th on turn two have four mana for turn three five mana for turn three so it's two more than normal and we can get some of these big creatures out i'm going to take this dark steel ingot but we'll go over the other cards undead minotaur a two three for three that's a standard i would say he's chaff unless you're going for a um a zombie deck or a lot of creatures in your deck frost breath we're not going to be doing blue but it's an instant that works with young pyromancer and it's good removal but with Chandra's ability, I'm looking at Frost Breath and that minus seven. If that's the only instant, I'm going to be disappointed. Plummet is good. That gets rid of things like Messenger Drakes. That gets rid of um, Sanger Vampires and Sarah Avatars and, well, not Sarah Avatars, Sarah Angels, and gets rid of uh, Sarah for the Sword very, very easily. We'll probably find more, but I think we need Ramp now more than we need um, Flying Removal. The Shadowborn Apostle, I think this is either first or second one that we've seen. Um, now you need six of them to get a demon. I haven't seen any demons yet. This is a big gamble to go for the Shadowborn Apostle route. Now if you're going for a Weenie Horde deck, Shadowborn Apostles, throw as many of them as you can, and attack as often as you can. They're, they're fodder. Demolish, that's a good way to get rid of either land or or an artifact um, plus it also pumps out 
elementals do to young pyromancer but it's expensive at four um we have two cards at four but we're not really going to be concentrating too much um if we popped our chandras at the minus seven there um and we pulled demolish as the only sorcery chandra pyromancer exile top ten choose an instant or sorcery and copy it three times cast them without paying their mana cost so say we get that yay we kill three of their lands or an artifact in two lands or something like that it'll hamper them but if they've already got their big stuff out it's not really going to help us now giant spider is again it's a forecast um a forecaster or a four drop so it's got reach and a two four and it's a pretty standard green combo a special ability um big toughness for four uh, I think we can skip the giant spider, especially with the deadly recluse, because the deadly recluse is going to stop even a giant spider. The armored cankrix, I'm going to have to pass on. We're not doing blue for one, and five mana for a two five. Um, he can attack, yay, he can block, okay, but even a deadly recluse can kill an armored cankrix. Um, and if you have a giant growth or something like that in hand, your deadly recluse is going to survive. And it will kill the armored cankrix. Spell blast. Now that will be a hate draw, a hate draft, if anything. Um, we're not running blue, and hopefully if we do it right, play our cards well, um, the spell blast is going to be ineffectual because it'll run out of mana. Uh, now the elite arcanist, he is an awesome dude. Um, say we take the Chandra's Outrage, it's an instant. Okay, we could take Chandra's Outrage and exile it with our lead Arcanist. And for four of anything and a tap, we copy Chandra's Outrage and we can cast it every single time we have a lead Arcanist untapped. So that is awesome. That's definitely an idea. But the problem is he's 1-1 one, one and easily removed. Uh, we'd have to find some way to make him hexproof or indestructible in order to keep him alive without um, losing his ability. And I haven't seen many hexproof things other than Glade Cover Scouts. Not Glade Cover Scouts, uh, the Ranger's Guile. So unless we stock up on Ranger's Guile, he's going to be a, a target. He's going to be a huge target, especially with some of these instants that we have. I'm going to grab this Dark Steel Ingot because of its uh, ramp capability. Now, here we have a, a couple of um, choices. We have our Tidebinder Mage. Comes into play, taps down a red or green. Specifically, it could get rid of um, a Ground Shaker Sliver. Play him out of commission. Or a Shivan Dragon. Hey, that's good, but it's very specific. Red or green. And as long as we have the Tidebinder Mage, which admittedly at 2-2 two, two for 2 is, in this ability is not bad, but it's going to cost... Um, he's going to go away quickly, especially if we have another person running red removal and uh, burn. So Tidebinder Mage might not survive that well. Uh, the Stonehorn Chanter, it's a 6 caster. And for 6... He gets Vigilance and Lifelink until end of turn. He's a 4-4. Four, four. Now that's pretty good. You get your life, you get your blocker and everything. Um, and as long as you're willing to tap down 6 mana every turn, he's a very vi viable card. But I don't see that happening, especially with my luck and the amount of land um, screws that I get when I game. Um, it's going to be an issue. Now, Shimmering Grotto. That's a pretty decent filter card. You get one mana to your mana pool, or you can take a forest and make it a mountain, or a mountain make it a forest, or whatever you need to to get your spells out. It's slow. It's very slow. You'll find that when you draw cards and you're looking for land and you see Shimmering Grotto, your heart will drop. You'll go, oh, no, I, oh God. So you probably want to skip that. Now, the Aromancer, if we were running an enchantment-heavy deck, the Aromancer would be awesome. That makes our enchantments far, far, far more valuable. 
um, but we're not running an enchantment deck. Vile Rebirth. Um, if somebody was playing a good graveyard um, a reanimation scenario, then uh, Vile Rebirth would be a great way to stop that from happening. Unfortunately, uh, we are not running that kind of deck. The 2-2 zombie token, yeah, for a one drop, that's not bad at all. Get rid of a, a creature and you get a token. But we're not playing black, so we're not going to worry about it. Show of Valor, very good instant card. Especially in a, a weenie horde deck or an aggro deck. That plus two, plus four is going to be very, very deadly. Um, if we throw it on a deadly recluse, for instance. So it, it can suddenly do some really serious damage when you're attacking, or it can do some really serious blocking. So that'd be a, a 3 6, I think that would be. Yep, it goes to a 3 6 uh, with Death Touch. So it would be able to survive um, a Sanger Vampire with a 1 plus 1 plus 1 counter. It could survive a, a Shivan Dragon that hasn't been pumped. Not too bad. But uh, we're going to go on and take a look at this next card. Um, we'll skip it. We'll go to the Ground Shaker Sliver. 7 mana for a 5-5. Five, five. It gives all your slivers trample. We're not running a sliver deck. We might pick up a sliver here or there, but for the most part, he's way too expensive for what we're looking for. The Griffin Sentinel is flying in Vigilance. He's 1-3 three for 3. So he's a good blocker. He's good evasion. Um... Quick casting cost, but I think our Spore Mound is going to be the bigger bigger deal. Um, if we can get the ramp up in the deck, we could possibly get this out on turn 3 or turn 4. And then put our land down and get some Suproling tokens. So after that, every time we throw down um, a land, we're going to get more and more little dudes. So I think this is a good, good, good choice. Uh, we're going to go ahead and take the Spore Mound. Now here we are. We, we're at a... Um, we're starting to make some tough decisions here. We've got Spell Blast. We could hate draft that. Um, Solemn Offering. Go uh, the green, red, white like I said we would. That would be a good way to get rid of an enchantment or an artifact and gain some life. Striking Sliver, if we were going Slivers, he would be number one pick. Number one out of everything here. Because then all of our little Sliver dudes are going to be doing First Strike and we're not going to have to worry too much about anything there. Coral Merfolk, nope, that's Chaff. Disregard it, ignore it. Shrivel, all creatures minus one, minus one until end of turn. That's going to kill off some things like our Young Pyromancer and our Deadly Recluse. While... Somebody who's playing black is going to grab that. We don't need it. We're going to go ahead and skip. We're going to go over to Smelt. So here's Smelt. Um, destroy target artifact for red. I'd say this is probably what we're going to take. Blood Baron, we're not running black. We're not running a sacrifice deck. Um, a 2-2 two, two for 3 that causes you to get rid of creatures. Now, if those creatures are going to die anyway, that's cool, but... Anybody worth their salt is going to block that Blood Baron over the other creatures um, so that whatever blocks Blood Baron is going to take the damage instead of them. Um, Angelic Wall, good blocker and uh, good evasion for very, very little cost. Um, but we're going to want some incident sorceries to start pumping our young Pyromancer. If it turns out that... Uh, there are no artifacts to uh, destroy, then maybe we pick up a staff later on that we can destroy um, in order to get this spell off. So we'll go ahead and grab Smelt. Now here we are. We've got Ring of Three Wishes. Oh my god, this would be an awesome card. Um, three wish counters. And it could be a target for Smelt once those wish counters run out. But it's going to cost five to get out. And then it's going to cost five every single time we want to use it. Now keep in mind this has uh, been passed around one, two, three, four, five, six, seven um, 
people haven't wanted it. And the reason why they haven't is because it's expensive. And chances are somebody's going to end up taking this card simply for the fact that it's the only one left. That or a land, and they'll take this over the land. Uh, Nightwing Shade. Hey, good evasion, good pump. 2-2 two, two for 5, and it costs 2 to pump it. That's not very efficient, unless you're running a huge ramp deck. Pillarfield Ox. Now that's 4 for 2-4. Two, good blocker, good good amount of damage, um, but a little bit of expensive cost there. We have two instants. We've got Thunderstrike, which lets one of our creatures get plus, two, plus 0 in First Strike. Very good, very good. Helps with removal, get rid of those big creatures if we need to. Um, or Giant Growth, which just gets plus three, plus three. They might be able to survive, but if you can get that first strike in, you're going to do some damage. We have Sensory Deprivation, which is going to reduce uh, the damage a creature does. Not too bad, not too bad. In many ways, this could be considered pseudo-removal. Because a creature that does went from 4 damage to 1 damage per turn might not be worth sending out to battle. Unless you can fly and ping and the other person can't. Dark Favor, we're not running black. But for 2, giving a creature plus 3, plus 1, not bad. Um, and you lose a life. So it's a trade-off there. I think I'm going to go with Thunderstrike. Because I think that best fits what we need. All right, here we are. We've got an Advocate of the Beast. We've got a Blur Sliver, um, I think. And then we've got a Sentinel Sliver. We can't take both slivers. And then we've got Shrivel again. Um, Contender, a 2-2 two for two, two for 2 that gives all of our slivers Vigilance, and he'd be the only one with Vigilance. Or for 3, we get a 2-2 two, two with Haste. I think he's the best. We don't have any Beasts. But a 2-3 three for 3, and if we had beasts, he would be good. But we haven't been drafting beasts. I haven't seen any that really shout out, take me. So we're going to go with the Blur Sliver, and we're going to go from there. Now, Encroaching Weiss. This is going to kill the Shimmering Grotto. Since we didn't take the Shimmering Grotto, we're not going to worry about it. It's also going to be slow, because you need 4 to kill um, the non-basic land. And it's going to give us colorless mana. We're running a lot of red. We're running a lot of green. We're going to want forests and mountains or things that can produce forests and mount, uh, green and red mana. So we're going to go ahead and skip that. Now I said we're going to be building a Naya deck um, or possibly a heavy red green with a splash of white. Congregate is good, especially if we get young Pyromancer going really, really well. Um, because as soon as this instant is cast, Young Pyromancer is going to poop out another elemental. Yes, that's a technical term, poop out. And then uh, we'll get two life. Those are the only two creatures we have, so that'd be four. Sorry, two for each creature, so we'd have four. Um, if we're playing our cards properly, we've got quite a few tokens out at this time, and Congregate would be very good. Um, but I think I want to be able to... Um, to keep my deadly recluse around and my young pyromancer around or even the spore mound around a lot and i think troll hide would be best because then we can regenerate we get some an upgrade to the toughness and power and we'll see some more use out of it uh there's the shadowborn apostle again and then of course the frost breath so <clears throat> i think overall troll hide would be the best choice now we have three black cards and an artifact. Um, Duress, Ring Flesh, and Mind Rot. They're going to be used against us if we go against the person who chooses these. I think the Accorder Shield would be much more appreciative, much more useful, especially if you throw it on your young Pyromancer and it becomes a 1-4, harder to get rid of. Your Spore Mound goes to uh, uh, a 3-6. That's not bad. Your Deadly Recluse jumps up to a 1-5. So he's going to be able to survive a lot better. Um, the Blur Sliver would go to, uh, let's see here, a 2-5. Uh, 
I think this is probably the best choice. Now, out of these three, I'd rather give plus one, plus one, and hexproof over the flying and the glade cover scout. Now, here we've got two choices a Shadowborn Apostle. We haven't been collecting them. We don't want to collect them. Um, I haven't seen any demons, so I'm not worried too much about getting a demon out there. There might be a, a pretty big demon that comes out. We don't know. So I'm going to skip that, and I'm going to hate draft this Spell Blast because I don't want somebody to Spell Blast me. Now here we have a Shimmering Grotto and a Swamp. We're not going to use the Swamp. We're going to take that Shimmering Grotto because uh, it's far more useful than a swamp. And then we get an island. Yay. So that's pack one. We'll go over this again at the end. Looking here, the very first pick is a Seraph of the Sword. Holy crap, is that an awesome card. We have a 3-3 flyer that all combat damage is prevented. So we do not have to worry at all about blocking with this chick. Seraph of the Sword is, hands down, the pick we're going to make here. But we'll go over all the others. Vial of Poison. If we were running a First Strike deck, Vial of Poison would be an option. Because then the First Strike is going to kill creatures um, on the opponent's side. Good removal. Blightcaster. We're not running an enchantment heavy deck. Blightcaster is not going to be worth it. Voracious Worm. Um... If we had been pumping with uh, Congregates, then Voracious Worm would be a very big boon. You get all these creature tokens into play, and then you run Congregate, and then you cast Voracious Worm. Very possible in that kind of situation. And then you get a really big worm for very low cost. Divine Favor, good card. It gives a, a really good boost to the toughness, keeps creatures around. Um, and also gives you life. And it's only two, so it's a good enchantment, but um, we're going to skip that. Quag Sickness, we're not running black. This would be a hate draft. Um, we're not going to run black at all in this deck, so this would be pointless to take. Solemn Offering, Artifact, and Enchantment Removal, awesome. Four life, all that for three. I would take that if the Seraph of the Sword wasn't here. Seco Strike, 2, Flying, 1, 3, Decent Blocker, Decent Pinger, Decent Cost. So it's got a good evasion and all-around creature ability. So um, he's a contender, but that Seraph of the Sword, look at her. For 4, she blocks that Seco Strike all day long and takes him out. Another Striking Sliver. Now we have the Blur Sliver. The Striking Sliver would be okay. Um, but we're not really concerned about it right now. We're going to go ahead and skip it. The Marauding Mulhorn, we passed up that um, Advocate of the Beast. So he would be a good... It'd be a good drop, only he keeps attacking each turn. And eventually we're going to run out of spells that keep him alive. The Quarter Shield would be good, but we're going to go ahead and skip him because the Seraph of the Sword for four is... Easier to cast because of only the one mana uh, one mana symbol, and she has a much better ability. Who cares if uh, somebody attacks you with a Marauding Mulhorn if your Seraph of the Sword blocks it and kills it and takes no damage? Claustrophobia, again, auto tap down a creature. Somebody's going to take this. It's not going to be us. Um, I could easily take the Seraph of the Sword and throw it away. Plummet as well. Uh, we can't worry about that. Verdant Haven. Now, this gives us pump. It gives us life. So, on turn, probably turn two, we could get Verdant Haven on the land. And then we'd have four mana on turn three very easily. Um, we're going to skip it, even though it's a very good card. Um, because Seraph of the Sword is going to help us more. Soul Mender, gain a life. Not too bad. Um, Voracious Worm and Soul Mender goes hand in hand. Since we can't draft both, we're going to draft, draft neither. Time Ebb. Good removal. 
but the player will pick it up and cast it again unless you have a counter that's waiting um, between turns. So we're going to take this Seraph of the Sword and start our second pack draft. Now this is troublesome. We see that we've got a Sanger Vampire. We could probably hate draft him, but Seraph of the Sword is protected. We don't have to worry about it. Steel Form Sliver, 0 1, heh, for 3, and he's a 2 2. So he turns out to be a 2 3 for 3. That's a standard formula. We don't really need it. We only have one sliver. If we're collecting slivers, he would be a draft. Dark Steel Ingot, another one would be a great boon to us. It would provide us with a great ramp. I think we're going to take that. We have Predatory Sliver. We only have one other sliver, but then we'd have a 2 2 and a 3 3. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, we'll have to see about that. Solemn Offering, again, a solid card, but we're not going to take it. Same thing with the, the Academy Raider. Quag Sickness, we know that. Scroll Thief is Scroll Thief. Whenever you deal combat damage to a player, draw a card. So we have to some have some way to constantly get that damage going. We have nothing that gives unblockability. Um, we'll probably end up having Zephyr's... Uh, Zephyr Charges, I think that's the name of the card that gives flying uh, later on, but we're going to go ahead and skip the card. Sliver Construct, that's going to handle our Intimidate creatures, but uh, we're not running a Sliver deck. We're going to go ahead and skip that. He's also very easy to get rid of with Smelts and uh, Solemn Offerings and stuff like that. Naturalize is also a big contender for this. It's also good for our... Uh, our friend the young pyromancer. Can't remember what I chose last time. I think it was a uh, dark steel ingot. Naturalized does not work on dark steel ingots. Troll hide, we have one. We could get this, um, but we'll skip it. Uh, there's marauding mulhorn again. Shadowborn apostle. We'll take the dark steel ingot. I think that's probably the better bet. Now we have some some really good cards here. We've got silence. Nothing ticks anybody off more than running silence on them. Uh, we've got Diabolic Tutor, good draw. We're not running black, Tenacious Dead, Liturgy of Blood. We're going to ignore those. Celestial Flare, great removal. Great removal. Um, Divine Favor, again, solid card. We're going to skip it, though. We could take that Deadly Recluse and have a second way to Death Touch and everything. We have Divination, draw two cards, Seismic Stop. And then uh, we've got the R Wind Reader Sphinx. It got through. This was a double rare pack, it looks like. Wow, look at that. Whenever a creature with flying attacks, you may draw a card. So a 7, 3, 7, we don't have that much ramp. I would say that we take this Deadly Recluse. Even though the others are pretty nifty, the Deadly Recluse is probably going to be the most wonderful card all right here we go there's the advocate of the beast again hive stirrings but this caught my eye ogre battle driver whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control that creature gets plus two plus zero and haste so all those tokens that we're creating up here with the young pyromancer and the spore mound we are going to be able to own stuff. Um, and look at that. We play a land. We get a token. Uh, and then we cast something. We get another token. We've got this Ogre Battle Driver out. That completely gives us hasty tokens that are three ones. Awesome, awesome card. Why it was passed up, I don't know. It's all the other cards... Even the Hunt the Weak. The Hunt the Weak is a plus one, plus one, and then causes it to fight another creature. I say this even beats that, so bam. No brainer. So here we are. We've got an Elixir of Immortality. All those spells that are going into our graveyard. Back in, plus five life. Thank you. Um, another Divine Favor, Seismic Stop. Shiv's Embrace, good invasion. Good pump ability. Really good pump ability. It turns a creature into a shivan dragon for for God for God's sake. Yeah, so that's a good enchantment. But 
with all those naturalizers and solemn offerings floating around, that's not going to last long. Um, Merfolk Spy. That's chaff again. Essence Scatter. That could be a problem, but we're not going to worry too much about it right now. Um, if we face up against a guy who does that, then we deserve getting this slapped on us. The Capacious Knight, first strike, and pump ability for two. Not bad. If we were decide to run a mono white or a red white deck this would be a perfect fit for the most part but we're not um, we've got dragon hatchling good evasion again pump ability uh, glade cover scout hex proof again yeah lay of the land now we grab this lay of the land and go out and get a a land out of our deck if we're getting mono screwed um, but I think this Elixir of Immortality is probably going to help us more. We'll take that. Now looking here, we've got a bunch of stuff. We've got that Lay of the Land again. We've got a Negate, another Capacious Knight, Seismic Stomp, and Cancel. So even though these are good counter spells against us, I think we can skip them and look down here. Uh, we've got Corrupt. We're not running black, so we're not going to have any swamps. Corrupt can be ignored. It's also very expensive. Uh, Dragon Age Egg, but that means that at least uh, in an ideal situation that'd be six damage to somebody. Um, to target creature or player. Yep, and then you gain life. For running black, that'd be a good one. Dragon Egg, hey, cheap blocker, chump blocker. Um, and then it turns into a a little dragon hatchling uh, that's 2-2 two, two instead of 0-1 so it's okay um, Canyon Minotaur I think he goes into the, the chaff I think Wild Guess is gonna gonna do us good we can get rid of cards that are slowing us down in our hand um, and then we also can create dudes with it especially if you draw a land when we need it so Wild Guess is even better than Lay of the Land I think well, no, Lay of the Land gives us um, mana that we need. Um, but Wild Guess could do the same thing, especially if we got land in the top two slots, uh, top two cards of our library, then um, we'll actually be able to get two lands instead of one. Now here we are. we got a bunch of options. Staff of the Death Magus. We're not running black. Um, Staff of the Mind Magus. We're not running blue. Now, Oath of the Ancient Wood. When it or an enchantment enters the battlefield, plus one, plus one counter on target creature. If you're running an enchantment heavy deck, this would be an awesome card. This has been passed up. One, two, three, four, five, six people have passed it up. All five people, but we're going to be the sixth. So I think that's going to go the wayside. We're not running black. Good card, but not running black. Chaff. Ah, Goblin Shortcutter. Um, he's decent, but we're not really worried about one creature not being able to block. Yeah. Is it 2-1 for 2? Not bad. And then causing a creature to not be able to block? Not bad as well. Uh, but I think we'd be better off with Fog. Troll Hide. Again, we've got one. We could get another, but I think one should suffice for now. Fog, that's the money card in this in this pick. It'll protect everything on our side um, if something gets through. I think it's a no-brainer. Plus, it creates dudes. Now, here we are. We've got Show of Valor. Good card. Dark Favor. No black. Another Blur Sliver. That would be good because then we'd have two slivers in the deck. But we don't really have to worry too much about it. Um, Shrivel, not doing it. We already talked about Goblin Shortcutter. If we're running a sacrifice deck with lots and lots and lots of token creation, Barrage of Expendables, perfect card for that deck. But a card that keeps coming that can potentially keep coming back to your hand if you're lucky enough. Um, not only that, every time you cast it, you get in three elementals instead of one. Instead of two. Uh, if you have a young pyromancer out. If you have more young pyromancers out, 
then shenanigans happen all over the place. So I think Molten Birth is the best card out of what we have here. Not to mention our Ogre Battle Driver is going to give both of those um, haste, and they're going to be three ones. So here we are. We've got Vial of Poison again. We've got Divine Favor, Solemn Offering, Striking Sliver, Verdant Haven, and Soul Mender. Now, I can't remember if I took Verdant Haven or Solemn Offering before. We'll have to see how this changes things. But Solemn Offering, good way to get rid of artifacts or enchantments. But Verdant Haven is going to give us that ramp that we need. We need more and more ramp. The more mana we have, the happier we're going to be, especially with these cards in the deck. Um, I think that's more important than the Solemn Offering. Though... Yeah, I think it's more important. There we go. And then we're given this lovely hand of cards. Shadowborn Apostle, throw it away. Solemn Offering, we just passed one up. Throw away that Academy Raider. Um, Trollhide, uh, we passed up one already, but Naturalize. It came around again. And another pack, I think this is the same pack. We're going to take it. Naturalize is going to be a great way to get rid of uh, Artifact or Enchantment. It's one less than Solemn Offering, but it's instant speed instead of sorcery speed, and that's what we want. All right. Didn't I say <laughs> we've got a bunch of options here? You can take that Seismic Stomp. Um, might be good, especially with all of our three ones coming at them. We could take that Divine Favor, or we can take the Silence. Silence has come around. Now, chances are, whoever takes this silence, it's going to be forced on them, and they're going to not put it in their deck. I think Seismic Stop, with its sorcery speed, um, to create dudes with our young Pyromancers, that's going to be where it is. Now, out of these three, I'm going to take the Glade Cover Scout. It's our colors, and I don't care about the other cards. And we're going to get another one. I don't care about Mirror and Spy. And we get a Lay of the Land, so we're going to get that card anyway. There we go. And then a Planes. And we use Planes. Now, here is the awesomeness. We have all these cards. We've seen Time Ebb and Smelt and all these other cards. Tome Scour is good if you're in a mill deck. Um, disperse, bounce, bounce a creature. If you've got a lot of tokens on a cre uh, counters on a creature, that's a good way to clear it up, but we're not running it. Sentinel Sliver, okay, Vigilant Slivers, not really caring about it. Illusionary Armor, that is an awesome card. Awesome card. Um, we're not running blue, though, so we're going to skip that. We have Flesh Pulper Giant. He's good. Um but expensive. Look at that. Seven casting cost. We have two big cards here, though. We've got Volcanic Geyser. We've got our Consummate X Burn spell. It's an instant, but something here is even better than Volcanic Geyser. We have the Stryonic Resonator. Now, why is this important? Well, say we cast that... Uh, um, smelt to get rid of an opponent's uh, artifact, like a staff or something like that. And we end up with a 1-1 um, a elemental. Well, for 2 in a tap, we suddenly have 2 elementals. Now here's here's the awesome about it. It's a, a when, a whenever, or at ability. So if we look at... these cards here. When Verdant Haven enters the battlefield, you gain two life. Whenever Enchanted Land is tapped for mana, its controller adds one mana of any color to his or her mana pool. So we can use the Styronic Resonator to get us more mana or more life. Not bad. Molten Birth is not an at. That's not an at. Wild Guess is not an at. Nope. This is a Styronic Resonator card. 
Um, we get, say we get uh, Molten Birth, Molten Rebirth, and we get uh, two tokens. Um, and we do this Tyrannic Resonator with the Ogre Battle Driver's triggered ability. Suddenly those one ones are five ones with haste. Awesome. Awesomeness. Um, let's see here. Look at pack one. Um, let's see. Spore Mound. Landfalls. We get two. One one sapperlings. Young Pyromancer, a sorcery or instant cast, and we've got two elementals. So there we go, and those are uh, her abilities don't don't count. But I think Styronic Resonator or Stryonic Resonator would probably be the best card here for us, especially with all those when such and such enters the battlefield kind of things. That Ogre Battle Driver is going to um, ruin things with this thing running. So here we are. We've got a bunch of uh, bunch of cards. We've got this Brave the Elements. Yeah. We don't have white a lot of white creatures. And the one white creature that we do have, combat damage, is canceled anyway. I mean, it would be good if uh, somebody tried to uh, get rid of her another way. But uh, we're going to go ahead and ignore this. We're not going to wor worry too much about the Staff of the Sun Mages. Um, since we're not too worried about uh, uh, planes entering the battlefield or gaining a life for uh, spells. Um... Dark Prophecy, we're not running black. We'll let somebody else um, lose their life and everything. We're not running blue. Act of Treason is a good one. We can use Act of Treason to create dudes and to take over big dudes um, on the opponent's side. I think that's probably going to be our pick. Aramancer, again, if we had enchantments, she'd be a choice. Not running blue. Giant Growth, that's eh, okay. Um... Minotaur Abomination, 6 for 4-6. That's a big creature. We'll act of treason that. Archaeomancer would be awesome. We get our instant and sorceries back, but we have our Elixir of Immortality for that. Lava Axe, sorcery, 5 damage target player. If we pull this with the minus 7 ability of Chandra, uh, that Lava Axe is going to wreck our opponent. Wreck him. But that's assuming that Chandra gets to that level. Um, Siege Mastodon, 3 5 for 5. Uh, we can skip him. And show a Valor. In it. It's an instant. Yeah, good card. But it's going to be between Lava Axe and Act of Treason. I think Act of Treason would probably be the best bet. Turn the, our opponent's creatures against him. So here we are with this. Uh, we've got Staff of the Flame Mages. Uh, Vampire Warlord. Death Gaze Cockatrice. This is going to be a, a thorn in our side. Our Spore Mound. Our Aramancer. Zephyr Charge. Suntail Hawk. Plummet. Um, Divination. Cyclops Tyrant is uh, expensive. And he's limited because if they have a bunch of weenie creatures, he can't block them. So let's take a look here. I think either Plummet or Spore Mound. We already have a Spore Mound. If we could get another one, that'd be awesome. But I think Plummet is going to help us more in this case to create dudes and also to uh, take out flyers on the opponent's side. All right. And we're rewarded with this mess, which has a young Pyromancer. Hands down, we're going to grab that. Even though there's another Spore Mound, and there's a couple other cards here, like Pay No Heed, eh, it'd be alright. But uh, um, Young Pyromancer, he fits our deck already, so he's going to be taken. Alright, 
looking at this, uh, we've got Blessing, good enchantment. If you have a lot of mountains or ability to create white mana, good card. Um, Millstone, we're not running a mill deck. This is probably going to be used against us, but it'll be all right. It'll be all right. Um, Downstrike Paladin, we're not going to worry too much about this dude. Rootwalla, good card. Really good card. Four, four, for a total of uh, five mana. <laughs> so uh, three to get out and then two to boost ever after. You can only do it once. So it's a four, four for three, technically. I think we can skip him. Um, plus three, plus zero, and first strike for Lightning Talents. That's a good one. But with our Ogre Battle Driver, I think we have that covered. What I see here, I think, even with the lifelink on that, uh, the Angelic Wall is a good flying, Undead Minotaur, um, and the Verdant Haven. I think Fog is by far the best choice here. Um, let's see, we have Staff of the Sun Mages. We ignore that, ignore. Um, based on everything else here, even though that's good, and Hunt the Weak is uh, pretty decent. I think we're going to go for the Naturalize. Because it gets rid of all these enchantments and stuff. And look at this. We have another Fog. I think a, a trio of Fogs is awesome. I'll even go past the Active Treason. Because somebody used Active Treason on our big creatures, if we have one. Then... Uh, the fog is going to protect us. All right. Now we're we're stuck here. I think out of all of these, lava axe is going to be the money card in this one. Um, that'll be a good one if with Chandra's powers and everything. Now looking here, we have smelt, ranger's guile, or canyon minotaur. Those are our three choices. Canyon Minotaur, we'll go ahead and put him in the Drudge. Um, Ranger's Gal is going to protect a creature, beef it up. One green, create a dude. Smelt, we have to have an artifact, but it will create a dude. Ranger's Gal it is. Now, we have a choice between Staff of the Sun Mages, Lava Axe, or Show of Valor. I think we should go with the Show of Valor. That's going to protect a creature. Lava Axe would be good, but if our opening hand is two Lava Axes, we're going to be sorely, sorely upset. Um, I think the Show of Valor is probably the better bet. All right, out of these three, I'm going to choose the Staff of the, of the Flame Mages. We can use it to sacrifice to our smelt if we need to, and it can give us some life. Pay no heed or wild guess. We've already got the wild guess. I don't think we need to rehash it. I think pay no heed would be good. And uh, to get ourselves a nice flying, evading defender, we'll take the angelic wall over the blessing. And then we get a soul mender. And an island. So, I think uh, we have a pretty good mid range deck. Probably junk. Junk, yep. Um, here's the full list of everything. You can go ahead and look it over. You know what? It, you can find all these cards on uh, Gatherer. Let's take a look at the other players. We have uh, player two. He went Orzov, so he took two Sarah Angels and a Liliana's Reaver. Yeah. That's going to be a tough deck. Um, we've got Golgari here. He's got a Rise of the Dark Realms and Enlarge, Howl the Night Pack. All big, big, big mana producing cards. He's probably got a lot of ramp going on in there, too. Taking those Verdant Havens we passed up. We'll have to see. Um, we've got ourselves an it here. With an Air Servant, a Water Servant, and a Domestication. So, uh, 
This guy's going to be able to tap down creatures, uh, do a little power toughness rearranging, and creature control. And with our instance, we can actually uh, um, kill the domestication. So we've got a Demir here as well, the Phantom Warrior, and two Messenger Drakes. So he's going for the unblock ability and um, the flying and draw. We've got another Orzov with two Vanisher Priests. Those are a Headache and then an Ajani. So they're probably going for a quick, quick Soldiers style deck with a um, good evasion there. Got another Golgari here with Enlarge, Sanger Vampire, and Corrupt. So I knew that Sanger Vampire was going to go to somebody. There it is. And we have another Izzet with a Shivan Dragon, the Wind Reader Sphinx, and an Awaken the Ancient. I think out of all of these, um, where is it? Uh, this guy here changed out of from the previous draft I did to now, he actually got the uh, Phantom Warrior. He had three Messenger Drakes before. So we, we, we chose something different um, than what we did last time. Um, of course, we could discuss and we could click on the draft again, but when we click draft again like I did, it's going to go ahead and take the cards that we already have and have us redo it. So... Uh, that's it for this simulated draft. I hope you uh, gleaned an idea of what this newbie um, to magic draft would do in a draft situation. I think we've got a pretty decent deck. Um, it's uh, sealed constructed, so we're looking at 40 cards. Um, that's 23 non-land and 17 land cards. So to make 40 cards in total. So I see a lot of red and green with a splash of white and some uh, artifact in there. Um, I would be going with uh, both of the young pyromancers, Chandra's Outrage and the Chandra. A lot of the, uh, um, the token generators like the Spore Mound and stuff like that. We could have probably gotten another Spore Mound and gotten away with it if we had enough ramp. We've got two Darksteel Ingots, which are going to be very, very good. Um, we've got a Verdant Haven and a Lay of the Land, which is going to help. The thing that's going to really be good with our blocking is the Seraph of the Sword. We're not going to worry too much about big creatures coming at us, unless there's some, like a Celestial Flare or something coming our way. And uh, the Act of Treason, we can take the bigger critters. So, if we can get Chandra up to the um, up to seven loyalty, and Lava Axe is in that uh, those ten cards that we exile, that could very well win the game right there. And I think that's that's a big reason why Chandra is running thirty five dollars right now. And the Strionic Resonator with things like the Ogre Battle Driver and Young Pyromancer and stuff, that's just gonna Oh my god. A bunch of 1 1 critters that, um, I mean, that suddenly get pumped up to 5 1 critters with haste. Yes, please. Yes, please. That is awesome. Okay, this has been Excalibur of the Noob's Guide to Magic the Gathering. Uh, enjoy playing Magic and other games, of course. And I hope this has been some use to you.